just got back from a trip to LA. It was about a 300 something miles round trip. Actually, it was to San Diego. Uh, during the trip down there, we had a hissing noise. The sprinter started developing hissing noise. Obviously, it's an air leak in the turbo system somewhere. When the air leak started occurring, after about, I don't know, 15 20 minutes of steady throttle, the hissing completely went away and the engine light came on and the Sprinter went into limb mode home, LMH. So the leak could have been anywhere from there including the intake manifold which is this aluminum piece. One of the things that we're going to do is pressurize the system. The boost can get up to about 25 PSI. This is a tool I bought from Amazon. Link is below in the description. Uh, this tool basically adapts uh, air compressor to the hose and there's different sizes different sizes to fit different size hose we'll start pressurizing until we, until we start to hear the air leak once we hear the air leak we'll physically examine each of the tubes to see where the leak's coming from what we're going to do is take off this turbo tubes to fit one of these adapters so we can pressurize the turbo so we're going to use this 8 millimeter uh, socket driver to loosen that hose clamp and pull out that turbo hose. So sometimes this can also crack this plastic piece right after the turbo, but I recently replaced that about a year ago, so I, two years ago, so I don't think that's the problem. The sound seems to be coming from the top area here. The screw right here. See it? Mm -hmm. out of the way. So just wiggle it and it comes right off because it's really oily inside. Alright, so okay, clamp that gone. Put this in here. Okay. Do this. And tighten this. Okay, once it's tight, we can put air, we can pressurize this system. We're going to put in this regulator that they included. Okay, so here's what it looks like now. We got the regulator, which I'm going to hook up to my compressor through this hole. And this, I think you can turn it off so you can get the right pressure. I'm setting this to about 35 PSI from this hose to here. This also has a regulator and I'm setting this to about 20 PSI. I have the valves closed so it's not actually supplying air into the system yet. I'm going to turn it on. Here there. You can hear the air leaking. You hear that? It's coming from around this area. So the best way to do it is just put your hand around the hose. You can feel air coming out. Up. Oh, there it is. You hear the difference? So there must be a crack under here. I'll bring the camera closer to here. I don't feel the air coming out of anywhere else, just like I suspected was this area. So I'm gonna remove this tube. It's an eight millimeter hose clamp. Uh, loosen this hose clamp. It's nice and clean again because I used that engine cleaner to clean this plate this out before it was all greasy with oil all over it. Eight millimeter hose clamp. Yeah, it's nice and loose now. Well, this should pop right off. Yeah, there it comes. It's completely off now. And then uh, to take this off, what you need to do is you can see it's latched down here that, with that little notch. Just need to pull that notch out. See, I pulled it with my hand and it moves it up. This side's the same way. It's latched in right here. So just unlatch this. It's not that hard, the spring. There, I pulled it out. So this should come right off. There. There it is. You can see that's how it grabs with that hook. It grabs onto the bottom here. Not break it. I think this just wiggles out. Yep. There. There it is. Just wiggled right off. There. 
Ah, right here. There is the split. You see that? I don't think it was that loud. That's why it got louder and louder. Is each time I restart the engine, it felt like it was louder. So this was on the bottom of this. So all we need to do is order this piece, and I'll have the link below the part that I ordered to replace this. That's what it looks like now. Okay, we got the new parts in. This is a, an actual Mopar part. But that's what it is. We ordered from Amazon. It actually has a part number and a Mercedes stamp there. This was the original one. It's an exact fit. It does come with this plastic part where you mount the uh, temperature or airflow sensor. It's their manufacturing date here too. It's uh, April 12, 2021. So it's not like an old, old, super old stock. What we're going to do is I'm going to remove this clamp, uh, this hose clamp off, and just replace only the top portion. Remove this. Loose this. this. Ah, okay. That's good. It comes right off. We won't be using this piece, but I will hold on to it if we ever need it. There's the old one, and here's the new one. Let's Go ahead and put this on. Like this. It's, off. it's a rubber O-ring that goes around. We probably want to put some oil around it first. All right? There's some res residual oil in here. And then when you push it in, you want to make sure it's completely in. This little piece here. Let's put it around. It just goes right around and latches to the bottom. So the bottom part, this side's the same way. It's a very light spring, so it can be done by hand pretty easily. There, seated. There, once it's seated, you, this won't move, right? You might have to twist this around a little bit to make sure it seats. So once it's locked, you can see that you cannot pull this out anymore. It's gonna slip it right over there and then we'll do another pressure test just to make sure that there are no leaks in the system don't want to over tighten it okay as you can see i'm just using a standard driver no ratchet uh, we're going to repressurize the system you can see here that um, the valve still closed i have the regular set at 20 psi we're going to let the air in with specs for leaks. I don't see or hear any leaks other than the air continuing to flow in a little bit. Nothing obvious. It's not gonna hold a tight pressure because some of the air are actually leaking into the cylinder through the intake valves and some will be leaking out of the exhaust valves because we don't know the actual opening. It could be partially open on one or the other. Soft here. Going to need to re reset that check engine light there. It's indicating there are two fault codes, but let's read what the code is. And then turbocharger sensor under boost. So both codes say the same thing. Okay, which is P0299. That's the actual code. Now we'll go and reset this. So the check engine light doesn't come on. So we're going to erase the code. Erase. Let's enter. Okay, it's erased. So we're going to go and read the codes again. There's no fault found now. We will start the engine. And the engine service light is off. Use the iCar Soft to reset the check engine light. It's no longer there, so we are good to go.